It's episode seven, six, seven. It's cleaner day. Let's finish harvest. Let's finish it. Here's the bean, three semis to unload, and load a semi with beans. So, and then also in this video, we head to Oski tomorrow to uh, <coughs> actually put the nail into harvest. Be nice to get it done. I was editing the video and realized that I, I never actually explained why uh, why we were using Jim's combine. We're using Jim's combine because that's an old hay field um, that I can't get any of our equipment into. Jim can get his stuff into, but I can't get I could get our combine in, but I couldn't. The the road's so narrow at the entrance, we couldn't get the bean head in there. So that is why we are using. Um, or Jim is letting me use his equipment. Realize that, had to catch up with that, um, but that's, that's why. Hopefully that makes sense. Well, we have one gleaner ready to go. I don't know, I've never driven this thing. I don't think, yeah, maybe I have driven it once. Nope, how do I start it? Hey, we've started it. Um, Andrew's on his way with a head. Jim's on the way, to the, that's reverse. Good thing there was nothing behind me. Jim's on his way to the field. We'll put a head on, and then Andrew and I are going to have to use Jim's cart to get him out of this field, too. Come get a cart. Sounds like Jim. I'll, I'll, I might mail for him. He can do some cutting for me. We got 20 acres of beans to go. Oh, zippy. on this in my head. Well, you just got one. Here's the one hookup deal. Yeah, it is. That's a one point. Now there's one on the other side. Yeah, I gotta grab that get that one still. It usually hooks easier than the other one. Oh, we're, we're in trouble now, Jim. You 
said that. So this, is that one supposed to be in the in that cradle still? That one over there is not supposed to be in the cradle neither still. One of them. They, that, don't, they don't either one ride in the cradle. If they do, okay. If they don't, okay. Well, that one's got it's still on like in this circle thing. Yeah, it'll be all right. It, it, it goes. Yeah. Like no, like this this shaft here. Yeah. It's still in that circle. Yeah, that's great. This one here just wore out. Okay, so it's not supposed to come out of there? No. Well, it won't hurt anything. You, you may need it later in the day. John Deere don't have wire hanging on. It's got all kinds of things hanging on. All right. So Jim's gonna cut a swath. He's thinking I might run it. So he's gonna cut me a swath open uh, while we go get want to go get his wagon. I hope he can make it through there. Smoke out the back end of it or the tailpipe there. <laughs> he chugged on it. It definitely is not emissions friendly. No. Take me a second to figure out how to run this thing. So now that we got the bean head hooked up, and it means we're getting pretty darn close to the end of the harvest, and with the end of harvest means that you're gonna start preparing for 2024. You probably have already started preparing for 2024. I bet a lot of you have already selected your seed for this year, uh, but we're gonna start looking at inputs for next year. Chemicals, seed, fertilizer, all those things. I wanna talk with you guys real quick about an app that might cut down on a lot of those hours spent in the office, making phone calls, scribbling onto this piece of paper, scribbling onto that piece of paper, trying to remember what this person said and that person said, what kind of glyphosate this person had, what kind of liberty this person had, all those things to streamline it for you. There's an app that I want you to check out and it's called the Growers app. The app's goal is to streamline the chemical sourcing or input sourcing process. With the Growers app, you can use it to request products from your current favorite retailer or other retailers listed in your area. And if your favorite retailer isn't on the app, you can actually send them a request to join the Growers app to get into the network. And an app like this gives us the options as the consumer, which is a, a major win for us. Unless you have some kind of chemical engineering degree or something along those lines, the chemistry of uh, is kind of uh, challenging to remember. So with this app, it will actually let you research the products, find products, and uh, discover things that might work for you. You can add the products to your cart and the quantities and then send off those requests to those retailers, just like you're doing, uh, to making phone calls and writing everything down. It just streamlines it for you and saves you some time and keeps it organized. And on the app, the big one I think about is chemicals, but you can source seed and you can source fertilizer and all other types of inputs for your farm. It's not just a chemical app, it's, a, it's an input app. The app has recently been redesigned and optimized for your user experience. So down in the description, I'll leave you guys a link to the Apple Store or the Google Play Store to download the app. It's free, just a tool to put in your tool shed. I'll be using it this fall. I'll check back in with you guys later to uh, kind of show you guys my experience with the Growers app. Back to work. First time I've ever been in a tractor rev. Uh, no, that's saying really not of of this style. I've always thought of like a 7810 be a nice tractor, um, but this is the first time I've been in a tractor of this style. I've been in like 7830s and stuff like that when I was looking for that 8110, but kind of tall. Like they're taller and shorter than they look from outside the cab, from inside the cab. I don't 
think it may, matters as much. Um, I think it helps feeding a little bit. I really kind of do. Yeah. But then the other thing is too is that it's using your whole knife versus just having them in the same same row all the time. Yeah. yeah. You know the knife I got on that. Ever other sections upside down. Oh yeah. Yeah. I really like it, man. It's uh,
tires out. This is something you can't do on a new combine. They would not let you unload not being sitting in the seat. Would not. But we are running an R6 cleaner is what we're running here. I don't know, but R6, people that are wondering. It's off. Off? Are we off? Back up here. And then the next button we push on the little dash is the end. And there she goes. Back on in. Cool. So we're combining with the cab open. We're gonna get her. I got one little piece done here already. It's kind of interesting. It, so it does have header control, but Jim says it's not working right. It's not horrible to run without uh, the header control. You just have to, uh, I guess here's a little rundown of what I know. High, low, gear selector, throttle, um, Thrashing and header are right here. Adjusting things that I'm not going to touch. Here's how we control the header height. And forward, backwards is this little lever. That's all I've needed to know to get it out so far. So, um, sometimes it beeps at me. Sometimes it's just trying to keep me awake. You know, who knew they had that technology back in the day? Now this, the monitors do that. This one, it just does this. It's always interesting and fun to kind of like learn the sounds of a different piece of equipment because if you know what I'm talking about, like you just get really used to the feel like of the vibrations and the sounds of whatever you're running. And you really don't even need the alarms to tell you sometimes that something's wrong. It's the sound changes and uh, the sound changes, the vibrations change and you can tell Hey, something that's supposed to be shaking ain't shaking, or something that ain't supposed to be shaking, it's shaking. So, all right, we'll throttle her down. We'll turn on our uh, cylinder. Whoop, there she goes. We'll turn on her head. We'll give her all the juice. Keep it at me. We got it. Let's go and buy some beans. Well, today is a unique day in a sense that we're farming with uh, wagons. We don't use wagons much around here. But uh, that field of beans that Ben's cutting with the gleaner can't get the grain cart in there very good. Their grain cart's too tall. Can't get a semi in there, so we got Jimmy's tractor and his really nice Parker wagon. So, call the beans over here. We're dumping them. So we hauled the beans over here in the wagon. We're putting them in the auger, picking them up, and dropping them right in the semi.
cutter bar and make sure that I can kind of listen to the sickle and uh, feel the machine, make sure it's not like pushing or anything weird like that. Cruising along, that means. Let's go finish harvest. Got the beans delivered last night. I can feel that I ran the combine with the door open yesterday. If you ran a combine with bean dust, you know what I mean? But uh, Oskaloosa, trucking all day. Andrew's gonna bring the peat. He's just a little bit farther behind me. We're here. They've started. So, I don't know if we're going to Eddyville or DFS. I don't know, probably DFS. We'll find out. That's entirely too far away to see, but there's a buck just wandering out of the field. Just wandering along. If this had a zoom, I'd zoom it in, but it doesn't. Here's my first load. We're just going up the road. It's like five miles to uh, the co-op that we're going to, but there's apparently road construction, so. It would be really quick, like, quick trip, but. Well, it's been the DSF one. I don't hardly remember how you get in there. It's on the main drag. But... You just go that way to the drag, and then, I think, you go in the entrance that your first entrance that you see, and then you gotta loop up and through onto the scale. I, I ain't been there in four years, so. Last time you was there, I was there. So we'll find out. We're up here at the North Farm today, picking our corn, and I'd say everything's going smoothly. It is, pretty much. But we got road construction. So I should take about you know, 15 minutes around trip is taking at least 30. Well, we got three trucks going, so the combine hadn't had to stop yet. So here I am, patiently waiting. Well, I'm waiting anyway. Hope it's a nice road when they're done. Hey, 
Yeah, so Mark's running a 92 or 8250 this year. He's got two carts running him around. He's just been running up the road to DFS. There was construction, now it's not. Three trucks are hauling. I rode in the combine for probably an hour. I've only taken two loads. I'm, I'm being a, a number one player on this team right now. Come on, bub. Go. Let's go. But I guess he's got 15 acres left or so. Um, 16 row head takes the corn out. Man, it just tipped my fingernail too. I think our last three loads we're gonna take to Cargill because the corn's somehow wet, 17%. One o'clock, might make it home by dark. Oh, and I would fly my drone, but it's unbelievably windy. So, no drone footage, sorry guys. I was gonna show you the process this time with the elevator, but nobody was here, so I just buzzed right through and I didn't turn the camera on. But uh, I'm sitting here over the pit. In a little narrow building that's 11 foot four wide. That sounds big until you drive a truck through it. It feels small. But we're sitting inside a big concrete silo. And uh, there's a guy back there that unloads it for us when we're ready. We'll whoop her back out, and get on the scale, head back to the field. Or Ben's just riding in the combine. Not that I'm jealous or anything. He better have some good drone shots. That's all I got to say about it. There it is. Last uh, bushels of 2022 that need to come out. Done. We're uh, gonna take these last couple loads of Cargill and head back south. Maybe quit early. Well, that's it. Harvest is over. Uh, quick little wrap up there. I think we had a pretty successful farming year um, from the Kinsey planter uh, that we ended up keeping that, that loved the bean plant in there. We had some weather events like the derecho. Uh, actually, this is a little later on. We're starting a project, a lane clearing project in Jerome here. And uh, there is some, some tile uh, right there. There's actually also something that's up over that way that you guys will see in an upcoming video. Uh, thanks for hanging out with us uh, this harvest season. Sorry, the videos were a little bit different than they would normally be. And uh, we're gonna get back to, um, back to life, I guess you could say. Right, Bandit? Tiling, pumpkin patch video, all that good stuff. Coming up soon. See you guys in the next one. <laughs>